Welcome everyone and thank you for joining Painting with Picasso's Grapevine. My name is Leanna Hahn and I'll be your host and teacher for today. Today we're going to look at this gorgeous painting on grapes. So we're, we're kind of going to ignore our, our little glass of wine here today. Wine's for another day. But today we're going to kind of focus on doing the grapes and kind of having some fun with that. And we'll kind of show you how to do some of the highlights, the lowlights, create that depth and just kind of have some fun with it. Um, we are working with acrylic paint as always and um, we are going to be using four brushes for today. So we're going to use our number 12, our number 6, we have a number 1, and we have a chisel today. This one's going to kind of help us a little bit with our, our edges on our uh, little leaves here. Our colors, and we've got a lot of them today, um, we're going to be working with white, burnt umber, we have some phthalo blue and red, black, cad yellow, we have cad green, and we have some purple. Now for our background, just to get that nice kind of swishy background, we're going to be working in white, our yellow ochre, and our burnt umber. Um, as always, we have our cup of water for washing off our brushes and a dab rag to make sure that we catch any water so we don't take that to our canvas. So to kick it off, we're going to grab our very large brush, or all of our brushes as always. Let's go ahead and drop them into our water and let them rest. They like that there. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on our background. As you can kind of see here, background is very swishy, so this is lots of fun. This just kind of carries some interest in the, in the background, just so your eye has something to kind of distract it. So there's something kind of going on. Then after the background dries, then we'll kind of work on our grapes here, focusing on our highlights, our lowlights, and we'll have, uh, again, have some fun with it. So to start, we bring in our blank canvas. I have a 16 by 20. This is a wrapped stretched canvas and I'm going to pull out my number 12, my very large paintbrush. Go ahead and dab that off. Now I'm going to go ahead and be jumping, I'm going to be jumping between the white and the yellow ochre and adding a little burnt umber here and here, here and there periodically on the canvas. Um, again, speed painting, we want to make sure that we get that nice swishy feel so we're going to do that while this paint is wet and that's our most successful time. So kind of just going very quickly up and down, creating those nice streak feel, textured, make sure you wrap around. Again, I am not going to wrap around all of the sides just for time's sake today, but for you folks at home, make sure you do the same. Now, if you see any dimpling showing through on the canvas, and what that is, is that's the texture of the canvas coupling, coming through. That's your canvas yelling at you saying, give me more paint. So <laughs> go ahead, add more paint. Now you'll notice, once I start adding the paint to the canvas, sometimes I'll grab some white and yellow directly, add it to the canvas, and I get that nice feel. The trick is to know when to stop, when to leave it alone. So you want to move it all the way up and down, but sometimes you lose that nice streak because it's obviously blending on the canvas. So frequently, I will go ahead, put some color on the canvas, add another contrasting color right on top of it. Just one, two, one, two, three, max, and then move on. That's when you'll get that nice streak feel The challenge is I see a lot of new artists that overwork their paint and they cannot achieve that nice blend streaky feel because they want to keep working on that particular spot on the canvas. And so they end up adding more paint and more paint and more paint. So that in itself is a challenge. All right, so while this is still wet, I'm going to grab just a dab, just a dab of that burnt umber and just add a few streaks here and there just to create just a third color. I like having three colors in general as a rule of thumb. We'll kind of move across. Now this is the same process all the way across the canvas, so I am not going to complete this right now. You kind of get the feel. We're going to continue this across the canvas until you're completely done. So I'm going to cheat a little bit today and pull this off and replace it instead with one that I already have complete. 
Now I will bring up our original here so we can kind of keep an eye on what the original looked like and we'll kind of work together on that. Okay. So again, we're going to ignore our little, um, our little wine glass there and we're just going to work on our grapes. So we're going to start by drawing. So to do that, I'm going to grab my very small number one and I'm going to choose purple. Really any one of these colors you can draw with. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. They're very complementary as far as they're all in the same um, color family. But we're just going to get some, some circles out there. Now the question begs, which ones go on top? Which ones go underneath? How do you draw them? The answer is it doesn't make a difference right now. We're just going to set them out there just to create some forms. Ultimately, when you add color, that's when you're going to decide which ones go on top and which ones go underneath. Now make sure that you're not making them like a solid wall. So grapes will have a few sticking out here. It'll get a little thick, a little thin. It'll have a few here. Overall, it moves down. So you're going to keep a consistent movement down. So you got one right at the bottom ish. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start blending some of these and adding some color to them. So we're going to grab our number six. And I'm going to start with the purple since I've got that color kind of going already. And I'm going to start choosing a few. I'm just going to add some color. Again, this is a very loose painting, not intended to be so completely precise. And that's why we like them, because I like that, you know, that loose kind of feel, just, just so it gives you the opportunity to kind of correct things as you, go, as you move along. If you don't like it, it gives you a little room little room for fixing. So we'll kind of go over it just a little bit. All right. So let's go ahead, wash that off. And then we've got some blues. So let's go ahead and grab some blues and bring in some blues. Now here we're going to start getting a little bit more precise on where those grapes are. So you'll notice inside here, I'm going to start going over perhaps some of that purple, being a little bit more careful on where I'm placing my colors because they're now starting to work around the other grapes. But I'm not giving a lot of thought into which ones are blue and which ones are purple. So this painting is intended to be kind of a nice color kaleidoscope of different complementing colors of grapes. It's a fun one. We're just kind of picking and choosing. All right. So I think I got some blue in there. Let's go ahead and wash that off. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mix some nice maroon. And again, this we're going to be working with our blue, our red and blue. So we'll start with red and add in some blue. And we're going to get a nice maroon color. So keep on adding red and blue together till you get a point where you go, oh, you know what, I like that. We're looking for a nice wine color. And it's usually, oh, it looks, looks to be right in that family there. You can have it tend to be a little bit more red or versus blue. There we go. Kind of like that combination. 
All right, so then we're going to come in with the rest and we're going to decide which one of our grapes are going to be maroon. Now if we need to add some more grapes in here, that's a good time to do it. Just kind of using the side of my brush. All righty. Maybe we'll change that color right there. Now we don't have to completely fill it all in. Do you, do you see there's some holes in there? And that's okay. So the, last, the next thing we're going to do, let's go ahead, wash that off, and let's work on the outline of our leaves here. So I've grabbed uh, my chisel brush. Let's go ahead and grab some green on that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you an easy way to draw these, these particular leaves. So we're going to go in and we'll do a, a nice little easy one like this, just like a regular leaf. We'll come in, do like a three, almost like a clover. And then what you'll do is once you have that on there, you'll come on top of it and then finish that nice little structure that you see typically on a leaf in a vineyard. It's kind of got a nice jagged edge and then fill it in. We do the same on the other leaves. Just kind of take them up. And then fill them in. Now you can add a little bit of white in here. White is a great medium. It just makes it very solid. So that way you're able to kind of create some, some depth, some highlight. You'll kind of cover the canvas a little bit better. You'll notice there's a lot of colors that have very iridescent feel. So a lot of times we will mix white with them just to get some coverage. And then we'll do the same thing here. And kind of cover it in. I have just a little dab of, little dab of yellow. Yellow is a nice complement on any of the leaves. Just a few streaks. All right. So let's go ahead, wash off that brush, and then what we're going to do is we're going to move into our highlights and our lowlights on our, on our little um, grape leaves, or rather our grape grapes themselves. And what I'll do is I'm going to start with my very small brush. So let's go ahead and grab that very small brush. We're going to add some outline. So to do so, let's grab a little bit of black. And we're, since we're moving, we're using our tiny little brush, let's go ahead and swirl that. You'll get a nice tight line that way. And we're going to work on just quick, quick little outlines. And again, because this is such a loose painting, this is where I tell folks, don't kill yourself, don't feel obligated to have to get every little portion touched, every little outline covered. This is where you're going to fill in some of your gaps. This is where you'll correct and decide which ones go on top of each other because it's this outline that really kind of defines it. It makes that very distinct definition of the grape. So 
I'm just kind of rolling down my little grapes. And you see how quickly it goes. I'm not too concerned about where exactly each grape is. I'm just getting it around there. So, all right, so we've got them all covered. So the next thing we're gonna do is move back into that chisel brush, dab that off, and we're gonna grab some white, and we're gonna add some highlights. So you'll notice here on each one of these, there's a little bit of a highlight. So this is kind of where I have mentioned in the past, you have that flashlight effect. So if you were flat, shining a flashlight down on your painting, where would the light shine? Where would the shadow be created? So we're gonna decide my light is coming here. So with that, I'm gonna take my brush and kind of lay down, here's some light. I don't have to put it on all of them, predominantly the ones at the top, but there are gonna be some that are maybe tucked underneath that we're not gonna see necessarily. Some more than others, but definitely kind of give it the opportunity to say, hey, there's a little bit more than just one dimensional. This is a two-dimensional painting. There you go. So you're kind of getting a little feel for these grapes have a little bit more going on. And then the last thing that we have that typically going on in grapes is all that nice little swirly stuff. So we do that with our very small brush, our number one brush. I'm gonna start off with the green and we're just gonna have fun with it. It's these little swirls. So we're gonna start in here, and we're just gonna let them grow. Kind of just going crazy with it. They get really squiggly. Now, again, this is where I don't worry about seeing every particular line. I'm gonna go over it in yellow and emphasize it in yellow. Some of them I'll go over and emphasize in white. But I'm not worried about seeing everything. It just kind of creates some nice movement, some nice activity. And then maybe we'll kind of throw in some stems here. Just some outline with the green. Just to show that there's some. There you go, just light stuff. And a few more swirls. And again, you notice I'm not worrying about each one, each layer actually touching. Just kind of throwing them on top of each other. So hopefully you've learned some great little tips. You've learned an opportunity to kind of play with your first attempt at fruit. It's a very easy one, very light, very non-intimidating. So hopefully you'll take this and um, play with it at home, enjoy it. If you'd like to learn more about these paintings, do send us an email to info at Thank you for joining us.